What's up folks, Spencer here. I wanted to quickly walk through the process of converting uh, kind of some animation stuff from what we've seen, what we're seeing here into the new hooks based model. And with React Native 0.59 coming out any day now, uh, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to do that because included in that is the ability to use React hooks. Now, quick preface to all of this, just because hooks is available doesn't mean you have to use it. This is my first time using it and I just want to kindly kind of share what I've learned uh, actually trying it out. So let's go ahead and try converting this component, which basically just pulses a square uh, into using hooks. A quick note on this counter, uh, I'm just going to keep that as a normal state. And the reason I want to do that is to make sure that this pulsing animation works correctly, even as props or state is changing. Uh, to make sure I'm doing all of this right. And by having this, I actually learned a few things. So let's go ahead and check this out. So first thing we're going to do is actually comment out this existing one. And with hooks, you can only use a hook inside of a functional component. So we'll go ahead and convert this to a functional component. So we can actually go ahead and copy everything in our return. Go ahead, place that in here. All right, and we know we're going to get a count that comes in us on props, so we can change this.props.count. And then we've got our scale. Our scale, we'll just go ahead, uh, we'll set. Scale is just gonna be equal to one at this point to start to make sure we've got everything configured correctly. All right, cool, that's all set up. Uh, now we can actually start building our hook. And we are gonna be using a custom hook here to make this as easy as possible. So we're going to say use pulse and it is kind of the convention to put use in front of any custom hooks, uh, just so some linters can go ahead and work. Now within our hook, we know that we're going to have a scale variable, and that's going to be equal to a new animated dot value of one. And I'm just copying this from down here where we're setting scale equal to new animated dot value. We know we're going to return our scale. So now we should be able to just go ahead and take use pulse, and do this. All right, cool, so no errors, that's good. Uh, now the next thing we're going to want to do is actually bring in our pulsing logic. So again, just gonna copy and paste this all in, then we can reformat it. So we've got a new function, const pulse is equal to this. We're going to use animated.sequence and animated.timing in conjunction. Uh, we're going to change this.scale to just scale and then this dot pulse to just pulse. So if I save this, well, it's not gonna work because we need to actually initialize this or get it to run. So we'll go ahead, grab the set timeout, put it in here, we'll call pulse after 500 milliseconds. Okay, and nothing's working uh, yet because it's not working. We actually need to go ahead and start using these hooks to get it to work. So what I'm going to do, the two uh, hooks that we're going to use are use effect and then use ref. So since we're not using state, we're using just this variable, we're going to want to go ahead and use ref, use, use ref. Uh, that's going to allow us to actually store that variable and continue to reference that same thing, even as things are updating kind of around it. And with use ref, uh, the actual value that we want is going to be on dot current. So we've got use ref is equal to new animated dot value dot current. Uh, and that's going to give us what we need here. Now, second, we're going to want to use use effect. And use effect is what's actually going to just kind of track what's going on. Uh, so as state is changing around this use pulse, use effect is going to kind of be diffing things, figuring out if we need to update anything. Uh, use effect is a lot like the component lifecycle. So component did mount, component did update component will unmount. So let's save this and see what happens. Okay, so we had some pulsing going on, but now it's kind of going all out of whack. And what's happening here is as this count is changing, use pulse is constantly restarting uh, this, this pulsing function. Uh, so we're resetting the animated value to one, as it's mid animation. And something that's cool about use effect is you can actually tell it what variables to uh, depend on. If basically, uh, I think it's component should update, we can essentially do the same thing, tell it 
you know, if this changes, then go ahead and rerun this function. And because we don't have any, uh, this use pulse doesn't depend on any other state or any other values, we can actually go ahead and pass a second argument to use effect. So after this function, and it's going to be an array. This array is going to be whatever values it depends on. Since we don't depend on anything, we can go ahead and pass an empty array into it. And we can see we've now got this pulsing going on uh, as we're continuing to increment our count. So that's working out perfect. And you may be thinking, you know, this is more code than what we had previously. But what's nice is use pulse is completely uh, reusable now and completely independent of our component. So uh, an advantage of this is say in this use case down here, we wanted to add another square that was also pulsing uh, at the same rate or a different rate. We'd have to go ahead and create a new scale variable. We'd then have to do another sequence or we'd have to abstract this pulse, com uh, pulse function out a little bit to go ahead and pass whichever animated variable we want to work with. By using our hooks instead, uh, we can actually go ahead and just We'll go ahead and grab a different box. I'm going to pass a different background color in here. And then what we can do is actually go ahead and take this scale. Uh, we're going to say scale 2. We'll put that on here. And if I save this, we can see we've actually got these two different pulsing motions going on. And to go one step further and show that these are completely independent of each other, they're not using the same state, let's go ahead and use a different delay so that each one is kind of pulsing uh, independent of the other. So what I'm going to do is say we'll give the second one a delay of 750 milliseconds instead of 500 and we can say start delay. We'll default this to 500 milliseconds and then in the set timeout we can go ahead and use start delay instead. Save it and then we can see we've got these two independent pulsing motions going on uh, and that's something that I find really valuable about hooks. Honestly, when I first saw it, I didn't really understand where or why I would be using it uh, over state. Now, there's a, there's a handful of, adva of advantages, which we won't all cover here, but something that was really powerful to see for me was this use case where each one of your effects, or sorry, each one of your hooks are going to maintain kind of their own state uh, within them so we can go ahead and use the same effect in the same component multiple times to do silly stuff like this. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. That's kind of been an intro to using hooks in React Native alongside the animation uh, library that React Native has. So give it a shot. Remember, you don't need to go and modify all of your code to start using hooks, but it's another tool in your toolbox to go ahead and start maybe doing things a little bit easier throughout your applications. If you want the code, uh, additional links, anything like that, go ahead and check out reactnativeschool.com. I'll have a link uh, for everything related to this lesson, maybe some other React Hooks stuff down there for you to go ahead and check out. So thanks for watching, and I hope you found this valuable.